Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 231 of Screw the Commute podcast. I got one of my favorite people in the entire universe. And if they even come up with some other universes, she'll still be one of my favorites. It's Rain Parvis. And she, uh, it's, I, I kind of met her like wandering down the street. And uh, you know, she was wandering in circles, basically, uh, in her life when I met her. And uh, now she's a big superstar in Los Angeles. So I can't wait to introduce you to her in a minute. And hey, she might even make us look better when we're done with her. All right, so I hope you didn't miss episode 230, Becca t -Bon. I mean, this, <laughs> this girl, uh, I mean, she suffered all these, you know, crazy you know, pain and asthma and bronchitis since, since birth. And um, she, she chucked all her medicine. She finally got sick of it and fixed herself holistically. And I guarantee you on Bumble and Tinder, there's thousands of... 18 year olds that wish they looked like her and she's 55 years old. You just can't believe her. So uh, it's Becca t -Bon. That was episode 230. Now, uh, make sure you get a copy of my automation ebook. We charge 27 bucks for it on the open market, but you get it free for listening to Screw the Commute podcast. So check it out at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And this is the, a book that will give you all kinds of tips. Like it, it's helped me handle up to 150,000 subscribers and 40,000 plus customers without pulling my hair out. So make sure you download that at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And while you're over there, go to screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P where you can download our podcast app. And it does all kinds of cool stuff on your cell phone or tablet. And we have complete screen captures and everything to show you how to use all the fancy features. So uh, check that out while you're over there. Now, our sponsor is the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. It's a distance learning school which teaches legitimate techniques to make a great living, either working for someone else or starting your own online business or both. And we've got a really interesting quiz. If you or any of your kids or nephews or grandchildren are thinking about higher education, Make sure you check out our quiz that shows you seven different ways colleges and universities are totally ripping you off. You can check that out at imtcva.org slash quiz. Don't worry about writing that down. Everything we do, including all of Rain's great stuff that she's going to have for you, uh, will be in the show notes. And this is episode 231. Uh, the way you go directly to an episode is screwthecommute.com slash and then the episode number. So this is two, three, one. All right, let's get to the main event. Rain Parvis is an LA-based certified personal stylist and style coach. She's a media personality and she's the author of The Ultimate Guide to Style, From Drab to Fab. She provides transformational style and fashion tips for individuals who want to look their best. Rain, are you ready to screw the commute? Always. <laughs> I know you did some of that because you're the new mama. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, well, technically, yes. But yes. we did it IVF, but I guess that would oh, still okay. count. Okay. <laughs> well, that's still close enough for, close enough for us. So yeah. oh, it's so good to catch up with you. You know, I love you to death. And we uh, we met in a very interesting circumstance. Tell, tell them about how we, we, we crossed paths. Let's see. I was about, so believe it or not, it was actually 10 years ago. Oh my God. Is 2020. That long? I know. It's a decade. Well, that, you know why that sucks is because you haven't changed a bit. You still look ravishing after popping out a baby. And geez, well, that's what's it, true. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you do. You look exactly the same as the day I met you. I do think I just wear less spandex now, but that's okay. <laughs> so tell, well, tell them how we met. Yes. So I was, let's see, I believe I was like 30 years old and I said yes to a business seminar that a modeling agent referred me to and it was free. So I went and I was a stand-up comedian, former stand-up comedian. And I was just kind of figure, trying to figure out 
what I wanted to do next. So I was it, literally living in my parents' garage, teaching myself Microsoft Word, how to juggle. <laughs> I had no idea. How to, how to juggle and teach in Microsoft uh, Word at the same time. <laughs> yes. Well, I didn't know if I was going to stick with the stand-up comedy, so I figured putting a juggling act <laughs> would work. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know that part. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't get too far. I guess I'm not a natural jugger, juggler. <laughs> And then, so I was just teaching myself other stuff like PowerPoint and, you know, random things. And then I went to the seminar and I was sitting through the seminar for days and I ended up winning a consultation with the superstar of the <laughs> seminar, Tom Antion, who was going to help me with my business, even though I didn't have one at the time. <laughs> So you won you she won me out of a raffle basically. <laughs> yes, out of a fishbowl that yeah. really just changed my life and here I am 10 years later. Well, uh, the the big thing I remember is uh, us riding around in a car somewhere in LA and um I was hitting you up about, you know, what so what are you good at? What do you like? What do you want to do and and uh, somehow we got that you helped a lot of your friends get ready for their parties and dates and stuff, right? Yes. There was only two things I was good at at the time, which was shopping, helping my friends get ready for dates and saving animals. And we all know mm -hmm. that saving animals, you can't really live off of. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So, so, uh, I, and then the, the next vivid memory I have is us sitting in the hotel lobby. I think it was a Hilton or somewhere and, and, or I don't know where it was in LA. And I'm telling you, you got to write a book and, and you'd have thought that, you know, I'd have told you you needed to cut your head off because you're like, I can't write a book. And I, I refused to leave the table until you put out the chapter headings, right? Remember that? Absolutely. <laughs> and I always, there's two things that stick to my mind when it comes to your mentoring was Kim Kardashian started out as a personal shopper. So you're going to do it. Cause that was really when I had no business sense and I didn't even think that I could do it. And then you're going to write a book. And yes, you made me write down, I think I did seven chapters at the time, but now my book's 17 chapters. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> just took a little catalyst to get you started. But uh, uh, yes. I was so uh, thrilled because, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, people just can't see what other people can see in them. And, and that was just all we needed to get, get you kicked off. And then we did a crowdfunding campaign to, to pay for the book. Remember that? Absolutely. We raised somewhere around 4,000. So I really didn't mm -hmm. have to pay for any upfront fees for the book. And that was, that was, that was really helpful. And it, it's, there's something that I miss about starting out when you don't know any better <laughs> 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 is you really accomplish a lot when you don't have sometimes, sometimes it's easier to accomplish what you start out to have when you don't have any knowledge of anything else because you don't second guess yourself and you're just kind of following the instructions of someone who knows better, which would be you at the point versus now when I'm like, Oh no, I do definitely want to do a second book, but then you always have all your eyes on everybody else. And it's hard to kind of start sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. And then when you have too much money also, like all those dot com busts when people were got million dollars and they still didn't know what to do. So they blew all the money. When you don't right. have a lot of money, you have to be more creative and you and uh, more careful that you're not making major mistakes. And and again, with the crowdfunding, that's that's uh, you know a gift from heaven. But it wasn't like it uh, people just threw four thousand bucks at you. You you busted your butt for that. Uh, you made videos and you know. <laughs> you, yeah, you hassled everybody from kindergarten that you knew. <laughs> I mean, really, Tom, I mean, I really would not have done that unless you and your staff didn't make me. And now I even <laughs> look back and I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could never do that again. I mean, I could, but I couldn't. So yeah, I was hitting up people from elementary school. <laughs> and here's the thing. One thing about that's really great about having accountability or being part of a mentorship or something like that is not only did I not want to let myself down, I figure since I was taking your class, I didn't want to let you down because mm -hmm. then that all that stuff would be wasted, your time, the money. So I really just having that accountability really helped. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. But, but, you know, I, I think it's kind of equal because you, uh, uh, you collaborated with me on uh, when I uh, spoke for I don't know a couple of years after that, and uh, 
uh, you were a great salesperson. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I did okay, but then uh, uh, all these guys were chasing after you, and you made them sign up before they could talk to you. I think. Something oh like my that. goodness. Yeah, I still think I should get 10% of yeah. your company, but. <laughs> right. All right. Well, send, send the bill to my Juneau, Alaska office. How about that? Sure. <laughs> and then wait, wait for the check. So, so tell everybody uh, how you work with people now. Now I work with people. We can still do one on one. So I still do closet audits, but it's really part of a bigger package. You can well, either you said, work with. You said closet audits, right? Yes. So tell them what exactly that is. That is where we would go through your closet, kind of do a style analysis and pretty much see where your style is at, what you're doing right and where you could improve. So versus when I, when we started, we like you own part of my business, yeah. <laughs> when we started 10 <laughs> years ago, Tom, <laughs> there was no stitch fix. There was no personal stylist at, you know, department stores. So it was like a different ball game now. So now it's so much easier because before I would have to go through your closet, say, Hey, do all these outfits. But now I kind of just look on your social media or I have you email me seven days of selfies. And then we kind of go over that to say, Hey, here's what you're doing, right? Here's where you need improvement. You're doing the great colors here. And sometimes literally it's just like a really simple trick, like half tucking in your shirt or uh, changing out a different shoe or getting an updated blazer and making everything else work. So I have three packages that are on rainharvest.com that we can work with together, as well as we can do outfits through a Nordstrom app that is absolutely free. All right. I, I got to stop you here because yes. now uh, I'll be talking to you before they ever hear this. So you you can uh, jump jump on this. Seven days of selfies. That <laughs> yes. is a domain name and a book title. <laughs> Buy the domain name today. They won't hear this. Nobody else will be able to steal it until when they okay. hear this next week. Seven days of selfies. Now, you might have to have, you know, get the, the numbers and you know, buy a couple of them because, uh, you know, if you have a number seven as opposed to S-E-V-E-N. But that is <laughs> right there. You see how I see things that uh, it just screamed out at me. I didn't even hear the next 30 seconds of what you said because I'm thinking seven days of selfies. That's perfect. That's oh my gosh, title. I love it. Well, maybe that'll be my next book. Well, there you go. So I want that domain, uh, those domain names purchased as soon as we get off of here. So so you can work with any anybody around the world in that capacity, right? Yes, I've worked with one of the top branding agencies in Los Angeles, and they had clients literally from Cancun, uh, I, I mean, I almost said Siberia, but not Siberia. <laughs> <laughs> I think my point was from all over the world. So I was Skyping with people from London, Europe, even some in Africa. Oh, Cayman Islands was mm -hmm. one. And yeah, so they were all top entrepreneurs that have very successful online businesses. And what I would do with them, which is my camera ready package, is I would set them up with three outfit formulas so they would get ready for their business shoot. Because one of the best, most important things is before anybody hires you or anyone else, they're going to Google you and they're going to see your social media and of course your website. So you want to make sure that all those photos are up to date and you're in not necessarily trendy pieces, but ones that fit you, your business, your style, your coloring. So that way you, they're nothing's going to say, oh, I don't want to work with this person, even though it's subconsciously, it literally may be because they don't like your outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So any kind of, since we talked maybe a year ago, any kind of business dress trends for both men and women? There's always the, uh, so a main thing that I would just tell anybody is if you purchased a suit that was five years ago, you need a new suit. So it's just, there's different styles. Like for men, people are wearing their pants a little bit tighter and a little bit shorter. Now, obviously if you are in your 60s, I'm not going to put you in a really short shirt that shows your fancy socks. I mean, short <laughs> short <laughs> pants that shows your fancy socks and your sexy ankles, right? <laughs> so there's always adjustments that you can make. But one of the things that we are finding around women is an updated white shirt. So this is not just your basic button shirt. Maybe it's a fancy sleeve. It's an updated hem. It's a puff sleeve. Another great thing that we're seeing now is a collarless blazer. So that's either like a blazer that doesn't have um, the neckline 
which is really easy to style with certain pieces because then you can wear your updated white shirt with your blazer. You're talking about for women, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. All right. Don't, if you're a man, don't wear a puppy, <laughs> I was say, I was a puppy like, Wait white a minute. shirt. <laughs> so, and then, yeah, this is tips for women. Okay. Real okay, quick. Good. And then I'll go to the men. Yeah, all right. So another great thing for women is a, a vest with a belt. So you're going to have blazers or a blazer dress and you can add a belt a leather trench. So this may be a little bit, even if you're not into leather, you can do a full leather, just really nice camel one. That's a little bit updated and polished. And then of course, houndstooth. Houndstooth is a, the little checkered pattern that a lot of people are wearing. Now, are, you, are you able to give us some pictures to put in the show notes so people can go there and see? see this Absolutely. Stuff? Okay, great. Actually, you know what I'm going to do for you guys is I will do a Pinterest board of all these trends that I'm talking about oh, and beautiful. it'll just be for you guys. So then oh. they can just click on it and see all the trends. Awesome. That's great. All right. And then for the men, literally it would just be a, of course, if you're still walking around in a black suit, you definitely need a Navy one. Uh, you know, dark- I, was, I was looking at stuff online and they were even talking about, hey, your lapel width is out of style. Stuff like that. Yes, like the different collar trends, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the different, the different. basically it's the colors and the collar trends and the fit of the suit. So you just definitely want to make sure that everything's tailored. Even if you have an older suit, but it's like brand new or, you know, you have maybe only worn it a few times, you can take it into a tailor and say, hey, I really want to update the fit. Is there anything that we can do to save the suit before you invest in a new one? Oh. But I think the major thing is, is the colors. You don't want to just be in a solid navy, black, or gray suit. If we can get a little bit of texture in there, that will definitely update your style. Okay, so so I could take some of my old suits in and I can get them to let the waist out like 15 inches. <laughs> that's true now tom i know regardless <laughs> you're so rich you don't need to shop anymore but i'm still waiting for you to update those suits <laughs> uh, i have to get them out of mothballs i haven't had i told you i was only had a tie on twice in the last 10 years so. and that's good and i hope it's not a really thick tie no it's definitely yeah well maybe it was slimmer I, ties are in slimmer ties are, are yeah, definitely i think i was in. a little old-fashioned there <laughs> but it was a funeral, one of them, so that was, nobody cared. All right, so what else for men? What about shoes for guys? I would definitely say the shoes for guys, you want to go brown. Brown mm-hmm. shoes, brown belt. So it's really Especially rare. Especially if you we... have dogs, like I do, because if you, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you step in it. <laughs> you step in it, you can't see it, but yeah. you can still smell it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely go for brown dress shoes over black shoes for men. And these are uh, lace ups or lace ups, a chuck a boot, a monk strap boot, and again, what's a I'm chuck- gonna put what's a chuck a boot. Is that a chuck a boot? Thing? Is no, I I believe it. I don't know where it resonated with, okay. but <laughs> <laughs> it is a basic uh, casual boot. So you know, nowadays you don't really always need to wear a suit with a lace up shoe. You can wear it with a boot. One of the things I really, really love out here that's really popular in Los Angeles because I style a lot of like top agents and top uh, entrepreneurs out here is wearing a white, clean designer sneaker with your suit and a polo shirt or a t-shirt. But that probably wouldn't fly in some places, right? No, not all places. That's yeah. why when we do work together, I have to find out what Where, city you live mm-hmm. in, what you know, what's the climate like, what's the style like there. Because even the difference between Los Angeles men and New York men, or, men or women, is really it's literally it's really different. Well, I I can't wait to see if you if you get that job with uh, she, folks. She's uh, uh, up for a job with QVC, which is filmed in Pennsylvania, and this is you're talking to a Valley girl right here. Yes. <laughs> That's barely ever seen a flake of snow. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you like, Oh, well, that uh, Amish guy, that's the style in this neighborhood in Pennsylvania. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely be a culture shock, but you know, we make do. Yep. Okay. We make do. All right. Let's take you back a little bit. So sure. y- uh, in the transition period, you were still working part-time jobs and doing comedy and stuff, waiting to break out in this, right? Yes. When we were, when I first started, Mm -hmm. I believe I was still doing reception work. I was hosting single parties. I was working for 
doing sales and styling for matchmaking agencies. Uh, I was styling for other matchmaking agencies. So it was really kind of a, you know, a little bit of a longer road than I, than I expected, but literally now I'm everything that I put down and I wrote down. So if your people are not writing down their dreams, hopes, and goals, <laughs> they need you. <laughs> Cause yeah. it's really cool to look back five, six years ago and say, wow, I mean, I randomly put in a diary somewhere, people will be emailing them to style them every single day. And I was like, yeah, right. Like who's <laughs> going to get, you know, who's going to get clients every single day, but literally through Nordstrom and through my personal client business, I'm getting emailed every single day to style them. Sometimes I'll open up my Nordstrom app and there's like eight customers there that need outfits for whether it be a party, a, a you know, um, business, whatever it is. And it's just, it's just a lot. And then in addition, I also put, I would be on camera helping people relate to fashion in a very fun way. And now I'm doing filming for Nordstrom.com. And I always try to throw in a little bit of like really fun and sense of humor when I'm talking about the new fashion that's out. Yeah. And the, the Nordstrom's was a big turning point and then getting a hold of you because a lot of older fashion people are very staid and stoic and uh, just, you know, put you to sleep, but they got a hold of you and they thought, Oh my God. Cause you have the comedy angle, you have the great looks and you're younger. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So uh, that, but that was a big turning point for you is hooking up with Nordstrom's, right? Uh, yes. But what is also cool about being, well, you said I'm younger and I appreciate that, but. <laughs> well, I remember you no. as younger. Just leave it yes. at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's really cool is uh, there's a hole, not a hole, but there is a void with women who are over the age of 35 in the styling world. So the fact that I'm still around, you know, 10 years later and I am 40 and I do have a, a baby now. So it's a little bit different. So there's a little bit more of a niche there, which I think is why I'm doing so well at Nordstrom is because there's a lot of stylists there who were like, you know, 21, 22, but they're not going to know how to style a mom or someone that's, you know, speaking in business. Cause I was helping you. So I've yeah. sat through so many seminars. So I know how to style people that, through four seminars. Cause I know what drove me nuts when I was watching <laughs> other speakers, when I was working for you, helping you. <laughs> well, you know, I still have a collection of videos and a bunch of backup hard drives of you speaking. Cause you know, you did yeah. some great speeches. Oh, wow. I think I'm going to start pushing you into that more. If you really want to get a bunch of clients at once. Yes, that would be <laughs> scary. And <laughs> why scary? You weren't scared when you did it before. I mean, you might have been scared a little bit beforehand, but people just loved you when you uh, when you hit the stage. So, I appreciate that. So let's uh, let's dive into yeah. this uh, a little bit of uh, yes, you had a baby, and yes. uh, you kept the business going somehow in the midst of that. So tell them what the uh, that experience was like running a business and and uh, having a baby. Well, here's the thing. You know, if you're really in your wheelhouse, as they say, and you're on the right track, if one, you're continually growing every single year, and if the world throws stuff at you, but you still continue to do your job. Mm -hmm. So I was still working up until literally the, probably the day before I gave birth. Oh, <laughs> because, wow. Wow. Well, yeah, because one, I wanted to take my mind off being pregnant, which I hated. <laughs> Two... It was oh, you a didn't really have that glow about you that everybody talks about. No, and, and I don't know where great. people. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't understand how people did this. How women do this more than once. I did not like being pregnant at all. Um, I'm really happy to be just kind of back in the swing of things right now. And uh, yeah, so but when it comes to regarding with work, if you really love your work and you have a bigger purpose than just oh, I have to work to make money, but it's the connection through people and people were still shopping with me. Like some of my clients have been shopping with me since 2010 and helping me style them. So it was really cool to have them come see me at four months. And then they would come see me literally at nine months. I was still in the stores doing shopping wow. for people. <laughs> so it was just a really cool uh, transition and bonding experience uh, with my clients and still like, being able to help because that really took my mind off a lot of the fear of being pregnant, of giving birth. So it was really just nice to still work and be able to continue that. And then after giving birth three months in downtime, it was really awesome because I wasn't on social media stuff. I wasn't necessarily working with clients 
on Skype because, you know, there was a crying baby literally here like 24 seven. However, I took that time to watch all of these videos that the Style Coaching Institute put uh, put out that I ha was too busy to do when I was working. So literally I took the three months that I took off for maternity break and I watched all these styling videos. I updated my website. I redid it. So it was just, I redid my copy. So it was just a really nice, what do you call it? A break yeah. from mm -hmm. everyday baby life at the time. Yeah. So, uh, but you kept it going, right? And you said yes. some of the clients that you already had, you know, stuck with you uh, through that period. So, and they're probably, yes. they're probably thrilled about it, you know, to be part of it and, and see, uh, see how it progressed. But oh, they were so thrilled, mm -hmm. especially the moms. Some of the moms were emailing me breastfeeding tips at like two o'clock <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, so. <laughs> I think I did uh, send you a couple too. I'm not sure. Yeah, because because uh, uh, I know all about that because people ask me when I'm losing weight, like uh, you know how much weight I want to lose, and I say oh, I just want to get down to a B cup. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, uh, so where do they go to find out more? And 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 you know this can really make or break a person in business. I mean, you know, I I'm hidden in my house most of the time working online. But yeah. for people that are trying to do well in business, this is not any kind of uh, frivolous bonus kind of thing. This is an important part of your overall look and credibility when you meet people. Yeah, we're talking about if somebody has to go uh, in their business to meetings and, and try to get business and go to networking stuff, their look really does matter. It, it, they can't be looking old fashioned because people won't want to do business with you. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's... I mean, I know that everyone knows this, but it only takes three seconds to make a first impression. But nowadays, with everything that's being online and people Googling people before they meet and all this kind of stuff, it really, the, the person will get the job that has obviously a better personality and is confident and dress well over the person that may be a graduate of, I don't know, one of the top schools. So in order to get your personality shining and confident, I feel like your clothes have to not be such a such a hindering to you. If you're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. if you're just like fidgeting, if you're not wearing the right stuff, you're not going to be confident. So you're really not going to give your best interview or your best uh, Skype session or whatever it is if you're not on your top game. That's for sure. So uh, so tell them uh, how they get a – well, before we do that, tell them about, a little bit about your work with animals because, you know, both of us are animal crazies. So I have two cats right now that I absolutely love, and one is Goldie, and I named her after the five Golden State Freeway because that is where I rescued you from, and I was <laughs> I was literally almost one of those idiots that dies because they're trying to rescue right. a squirrel. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then I have another cat named Allie who I rescued from, from an alley. An alley. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Wow. And then I yeah, so I still. I don't, because of the baby and because I work so much right now, I don't really, I'm not really able to volunteer through the shelters anymore. However, I am always, always, always driving around town looking for a cat to rescue. So if I see one on the street or in an alleyway or anything like that, I will definitely snatch them. I find them foster home. We had one, we named him Tigger that, oh my gosh, God bless his little heart. He was, he was such a nightmare. The first night he spent in my, the foster family's uh, house that I had him and he like ruined everything in the bathroom because he was so scared. Oh, and we really had to work with him for a couple of weeks, but now he's like thriving. He's napping in the sun. We got him all of his shots. So it's just, you know, I'm still driving around town looking for animals to rescue. <laughs> well, yeah. So folks, anybody in the Los Angeles area, you have a bunch of cats, throw them at her doorstep. Yeah. No, <laughs> that was actually one of my new year not really one of my new year's resolutions but i was like i cannot save them all that is best friend's job <laughs> <laughs> okay so do tell them though how they get a hold of you if they want to book a session no matter where they are or if they happen to be in los angeles uh you know what the how do they get a hold of you for all this stuff Sure. You can go to rainparvis.com, R-A-Y-N-E-P-A-R-V-I-S.com, or you can find me on Instagram at rainparvis Parvis, or on Facebook and just tell me that Tom sent you and I'll take good care of you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If, if you don't tell him that, she'll, she'll you know, <laughs> poop all over you. But, uh, and, uh, and tell him about your book also. 
I have a book, Ultimate Guide to Style from Drab to Fab, and that you can find on Amazon, which Tom made me write. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the new one is Seven Days to oh, wait, Seven Days of Selfies. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, watch for that coming soon, folks. So, so uh, all right. So it's rainparvis.com, and we will um, have all this in the show notes, so you can make sure you get it. And we'll try to get her uh, uh, Pinterest board for you so you can see the kinds of styles that are current and maybe we'll have her back every uh, every so often so she can update us on uh, style tips and and help us get more business so rain thanks so much uh, for uh, coming on today you're welcome all right all right everybody we'll catch y'all on the next episode see you later